When the Buddha defines concentration or samadhi, he defines it as jitta sega gata. Sometimes that term is translated as one pointedness of mind. Eka would be one. And the aga is thought to be point. But aga doesn't mean point. It means the summit of something, like the ridge on a roof or the summit of a mountain. But it also means a gathering place, which seems to be the translation that's closest to what the Buddha is trying to get at. There's a gathering place for the obosita. There's a gathering place for meals. All well, those are agas. In this case, you're gathering your mind around one object. And the reason we say it's not one-pointed is because you look at the analogies that the Buddha gives for the mind and concentration. They're expansive. A lake filled with cool water. Lotus is drenched with cool water from the roots to the tips. A person entirely surrounded by a white cloth. That last one is the image for the most solid of the forms of jhana, or the fourth jhana. That's where we're headed. We want to be in a position where we feel surrounded by our object, as when you're with the breath. We talk about watching the breath, and it gives the impression that you have an eye in the mind, and it's looking at something outside of the eye. Its focal point is outside. Try to imagine the eye as being focused inside the eye itself, and it's aware all around. That's the kind of quality we're trying to develop. As when people go into the forest, those who go to track animals or those who go looking for mushrooms have to develop what's called scatter vision, where you're fully present in the present moment and you're aware of your whole range of vision. That takes a lot of concentration. Any thoughts that would come up that would pull you away from that state have to be dropped. So you're not at any one point in space, but you are at one point in time. You're right here fully in the present moment. That's where we're headed. And think of the description of the Buddha as an all-around eye. Back in those days, they had the belief that devas were eyes all around. They could see with their whole bodies. And the image of the Buddha has that connotation. He sees all around. Because if you're going to be looking for your defilements, you have to see all around. If you're focused on one spot, your defilements have plenty of places to hide away. It's like being on a stage where there's one spotlight. There can be all kinds of characters in the dark. So that's the quality we're heading for. But in the beginning, the mind has this tendency, and it picks up its tendency from long experience, to be focused on one spot. So you give it one spot, but you survey the whole body. The third step in breath meditation, as the Buddha says, is to breathe in and out sensitive to the entire body. And a good way to build up to that whole body awareness and whole body sensitivity is to go through the body section by section first. Because there are a lot of parts of the body that tend to be hidden, kept in the dark. And if you really want your awareness to be all around, you've got to cast light on those dark spots. So you can think of the chakras to begin with them. And John Lee starts with the chakra right around the navel and comes up. Doesn't mention any of the lower chakras. Might have been considered impolite in Thai society. But any spot in the body where there seems to be a center of energy, focus your attention there. Think of the breath radiating from that spot. And if there are any obstructions to it spreading out to fill the whole body, think of those obstructions dissolving away and then move up to the next center of energy, and then the next. And then you can go through the body in other spots as well, to the right, to the left, 
sometimes it's good to compare the left and the right side, say like your left shoulder and your right shoulder. Do they feel the same? Does one seem to have more tension or tightness on the other side? If so, can you relax it? Think of the blood flowing in there and dissolving away the tension. You want to get the reflex that wherever you focus your attention, the tension in the body relaxes. This counters that tendency, which is when you're focused on one spot, you tend to tense up around it. You want to think just the opposite. Wherever you're focused, things are open and wide open, free, with a sense of energy radiating out from the spot where you're focused. And again, think of the image of the eye focused inside the eye itself, or a camera focused inside the camera. And then as you go through the body, hitting the major spots and trying to find the minor spots, the little spots, say, between the finger, be between the toes, inside your elbow, inside your shoulders, all the little muscles in the head. Make a survey so that you're really familiar with how things feel in the body. In modern society, we tend to be really disembodied, especially as all our attention gets thrown into screens, into video games, emails, YouTube videos. Our attention gets cast outside, outside, and the body becomes unknown territory, like those old maps where they just had the outlines of the continents, and then in the interior of the continents are these huge blank spaces, whether right across here be tigers, well, there will be tigers inside if, if you don't get to know the body really well, because there will be places for your defilements to hide out wherever there's a lack of awareness. Okay? Mental states can hide out as well. So trying to make your awareness more all-encompassing. As you've done your survey of the different parts of the body, then think of one spot in the body as being your center, and then awareness radiating out from that spot in all directions, the all-around eye, looking in all directions, aware in all directions, clear in all directions. That image of the man surrounded by a white cloth. Some people actually have a sense of, of a white light that develops as the mind gets centered. Other people don't have the white light, but they do have a sense of everything being really clear. You want to maintain the sense of everything being of equal weight. The Buddha has that passage where he says, what's above is like what's below, what's below is like what's above. There are many ways you can interpret it, but one of them is that everything gets equal attention as best as you can muster. Think of every cell in the body breathing in, breathing out, and they're all breathing in unison. And every little cell is aware. It's a little eye, and all the eyes gather together. So everything is clear. When your awareness is spread out like this, when it's enlarged like this, it's less likely to go wandering off to the past or future. It's when your awareness is small that it can travel around. It pulls out of the present moment and goes here and goes there. But if you fully inhabit the body, you have to be fully present. And it's hard to go to the past or the future as long as your awareness is enlarged like this. Then you find that as your awareness does get more centered and all around like this, it's harder and harder to think. For the time being, you don't have to think. You want to get used to being fully present with this sensation of the body as you feel it all around, as you sense it all around. In the canon, they, they tend to mix up the senses. They talk about seeing with your body. Okay, think of the body as, as an eye, and it sees all around itself. 
Now we develop the quality of concentration that really is strengthening. It pulls you out of a lot of your ways of thinking. It gives you a really good place to rest. So all these images in mind, the eye focused inside, the all-around eye, the body wrapped in a white cloth, to give you an idea of where you're headed in the concentration and what kind of concentration it is. It doesn't bear down hard on one spot. Wherever it's focused, and there will be one spot of the body that tends to get a little bit more attention than the rest. But make that spot wide open. Wherever you focus your attention, you scatter any tension that seems to be developing. And then learn to stay right here. There'll be thoughts in the back of the mind, so this is stupid, nothing's happening. Well, nothing has to happen for the time being. It's good to get them used to being in this state, so that when it leaves this state, it can see things clearly as the mind begins to start thinking about things again. You can see why it picks up a particular topic. And you can ask yourself, do you really want to go there? You have this other alternative. That's what's so good about the Buddha's teachings. They give us other alternatives to our normal ways of thinking. They pull us outside of ourselves, because our normal ways of thinking tend to focus on becoming. In other words, you have a particular desire, and there's a world in your imagination that contains the desired object, and then you go into that world and you inhabit it. And you can get stuck in some pretty weird worlds. Well, the Buddha is giving you this alternative. We can get out, refresh your senses, refresh your mind, and you begin to see that the other worlds that you used to inhabit are really strange. And you wonder, why would you want to inhabit them? This is one of the ways that you can pull yourself out of some pretty unhealthy mind states. So try to work on the skill of developing this alternative, where instead of being focused on what your thoughts are, you're focused on fully inhabiting the body, with your awareness spreading in all directions. The front and the back and the top and the bottom are all equal. And everything is clear all around.